Howdy, folks. Your attention, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Hello, and welcome to Discoveryland. My name is Victoria, and I will be your guide on this adventure through yesterday, tomorrow, and fantasy. I always end each episode of Discoveryland by saying that around every corner of the park is some hidden history waiting to be discovered. The topic of today's episode is a perfect example of this statement. In order to find the little man of Disneyland, you really have to look for him. But before we get there, let's do what we do best here on the podcast and go back in time. The middle of the 1950s was one of the most prosperous times in America's history. The economy was booming, and for most, the quality of life was on the rise. 1955 was the year that the polio vaccine, developed by Jonas Salk, was declared to be safe and effective. Rock and roll, spearheaded by the likes of Elvis Presley, was on the rise. It was the year that the Mickey Mouse Club made its television debut on ABC. And on a stretch of orange groves in Anaheim, California, Walt Disney was constructing a passion project that would one day turn out to be the topic of a podcast called Discoveryland. A year before that, however, Walt procured the land upon which he would build his theme park. After months of searching all across Southern California, it was decided that Anaheim would be the ideal spot for this venture. Not only was Anaheim away from the hustle and bustle of Los Angeles, but it also experienced a Mediterranean climate with little rainfall, and it was right off the newly constructed Santa Ana Freeway, also known as Interstate 5. 17 different families owned the 160 acres that were needed to build Disneyland, and altogether, $879,000 was spent to acquire it. Much of the land was occupied by a vast orange grove, which would be cleared in order to make way for the park. This is where the little man of Disneyland comes in. Little Golden Books have been a staple of many childhoods for generations. Classics such as Three Little Kittens, The Little Red Hen, and The Pokey Little Puppy are fondly remembered by millions. Some Little Golden Books focused on telling stories from Disney's animated features such as Bambi, Dumbo, and Lady and the Tramp. Others focused on Disneyland itself. In 1955, a Little Golden Book titled Walt Disney's Little Man of Disneyland was published. It was written by Jane Werner under the pen name Annie North Bedford and illustrated by Richmond Kelsey of Walt Disney Studios. It's a very interesting story because of how it portrays the creation of Disneyland. The story draws several parallels to how the park was actually built. Little Man of Disneyland tells the story of Patrick Begora, a little leprechaun who lives inside an orange tree on the land that will soon become Disneyland. One morning, Patrick sets out for a walk and is shocked to find Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Goofy, and Pluto in his orange grove. Donald and Goofy are carrying shovels and are preparing to dig up trees. When Patrick confronts them, they undermine him based on his small size. But Patrick, it turns out, is a magical leprechaun, the last of his kind in what he refers to as movie land. He uses his magic to splinter Donald's shovel. Mickey addresses Patrick's concerns about building on his land and explains that they are creating Disneyland. However, Patrick believes Mickey to be crazy, so he invites Patrick to the studio so that he can see the Disneyland plans for himself. Upon being invited into their helicopter, Patrick is frightened since he has never seen a helicopter before. Eventually, he agrees to tag along and is then whisked into the sky and becomes entranced with all the things he can see from above. At the studio, Mickey and Goofy show Patrick maps, designs, and artwork for things that will be part of Disneyland. 
He sees a train station, a roller coaster, and a boat in a jungle river, among several other things. Quickly convinced about the wonderful things he's shown, Patrick approves of Disneyland and gives the go-ahead for construction to begin. However, he has just one request. When the park is built, Patrick wants to remain in Disneyland in a snug little house. Mickey offers to build him a new house, but Patrick declines. He insists that he wants a place out of sight that is hidden away. He and Mickey shake hands on this deal and Patrick returns to the orange grove and watches the construction of Disneyland. When the last orange tree, Patrick's home, is removed, Mickey tells Pat that he'll find a new place for him to live. Patrick insists that he has already found a new home and at night, he relocates his belongings to it. At last, Patrick is content to live in Disneyland, away from the crowds, in a snug little place that only he knows how to find. It's truly interesting how Little Man of Disneyland depicts the creation of Disneyland. Introducing Patrick and incorporating Mickey and friends to tell the story of how the park is built is truly the mark of classic Disney storytelling. The book itself is full of vivid, colorful artwork with vintage representations of Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Goofy, and Pluto. As previously noted, Disneyland was built on top of an orange grove, and Patrick Begora's home is inside an orange tree in the grove. Additionally, Walt Disney used to travel between the studio and Disneyland in a helicopter to oversee the park's construction. This is why the characters also fly around in a helicopter between the park and the studio. The concept images of Disneyland in the book that are shown to Patrick are also based off actual concept artwork for Disneyland's attractions. The story is a fun, in-universe way of telling the story of how Disneyland came to be. In 2015, during Disneyland's 60th anniversary celebration, Patrick Begora's home was finally revealed to Disneyland guests. To find it, you'll have to go to Adventureland. When you approach the entrance to Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Forbidden Eye, look to your right for a planter that contains a tall orange tree bearing the sign for the attraction. Then, walk up to the planter and peer around the base of the tree. You just might see a tiny doorway with a small light next to it, as well as a small window and a vent. Perhaps Patrick is inside, escaping the hustle and bustle of Disneyland. So when you visit Disneyland, keep your eyes wide open. Maybe you'll see a wee man in green smoking a small clay pipe. Maybe you'll follow him when he goes home and find out where he lives. If you do, you'll be the only one in the world who's found Patrick Begora's home. There's no place like Disneyland, and around every corner of the park is some hidden history waiting to be discovered. I hope you'll join me next time for another adventure into the vibrant history of the Magic Kingdom. I'd love to hear from you. You can write to Discoveryland by emailing discoverylandshow at yahoo.com or find us on Facebook and Instagram at discoverylandshow and on Twitter at discoverylandvc. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Disneyland has now ended its normal operating day. We hope you've enjoyed your visit to the Magic Kingdom and that you'll be back with us again soon.